Hey guys, Yama Killer here, back again with a what decks to play this weekend video. I'm going to be going over the six major formats that we've got, Standard, Pioneer, Modern, Legacy, Vintage, and Popper. Um, lots of big events this weekend, we've got Super PTQ for Popper, Super PTQ for Vintage, we've got all the challenges and all that such on MTGO. Before we get into the deck list, I want to go over a couple things. One, there are certain formats I don't play very much, and I will say that before I go over the deck list for that format. And two, uh, if you guys like any of these videos that I put out or any of my content, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitch and Twitter in the description below so you can see my gameplay and my talks live. And yeah, let's get into it. First, let's start off with Standard. We've got uh, Gruel Adventures. I personally have not played Standard in many, many months. But I have friends who play on the PT, friends who play on the CFB events, the Mythic Qualifiers, the SCG events, and basically all of them come to the consensus that Gruel Adventures is just the best deck to be playing. Playing anything else is pretty much a mistake. There are decks that can target specifically Gruel Adventures, like potentially Esper or Mardu Doom Foretold, but the fact that those decks are pretty poor against the rest of the meta of people playing other decks because people are not very happy with playing Gruul right now, and especially the Gruul Mirror, makes it so. Gruul, I think, is just the best deck, and even against those decks, you have cards like the Great Henge or Edgewall Innkeeper that get you insane card advantage when you need to be doing that, or just free, quick, clean kills with Ember Cleave. So for those reasons, I'd be playing Gruul Adventures. I don't know much about the format, but this deck list looks pretty nice to me. It did fairly well in the CFB event recently, and it's something that I would probably play myself. Now let us move on to Pioneer. Personally, I don't usually play this format all that much, but I have some friends who played it recently, and some people who played it a lot. I ended up playing Mono Green Planeswalkers this weekend, which I think is fine. It's acceptable, a reasonable tier 2 deck. Very easy to play as you don't really have any sideboarding to be done. But, for my friends who have tested the format, who have played a lot of it, I was told that Oops All Spells, a Yorion version with 80 cards, is the best way to go. Now this deck gets to play a bunch of modal double face cards, which if you're just playing those as your only lands in your deck, I think the deck is usually pretty busted. Um, a lot of the hate that you see is like uh, Soul Guide Lantern, Rest in Peace and such, which they don't have game one, so almost always taking game ones pretty easily. In games 2 and 3, you have easy ways to answer it in, like Abrupt Decay, Reclamation Sage, Natural State, all these different cards that are very, very easy to use to break up your opponent's uh, anti, uh, your their, their hate for your deck. So, personally, I'd be going for Oops All Spells. It did very well and won a Pioneer Showcase recently. It's put up bunches of top 8s and a bunch of different format challenges and PTQs, so this would be my personal choice. Although I do not play the format very much, this is what I would go with. Now let us move on to Modern. Modern has some very clear front runner, front runners. Let's see if I can find the classic front runner, which I think basically if you are playing <clears throat> Modern, this is the first deck you need to be worried about. There are a bunch of different variations. Some people cut down on Force Negations. Some people don't play Primeval Titan. Some people cut down on Omnath. Some people don't play that many Uros. But some variation of four color Uro with two to three Field of the Deads will be what you are going to be playing against in a lot of rounds in your big Modern events. This is the best deck. Not much more to say about what I think the best deck is. This is the best deck. Now, personally, I have not had success playing this deck. I'm not a very uh, control-centric uh, player. I've had difficulties figuring out exactly how to sequence spells, make land drops, and how to play correctly against a bunch of these cards that people are playing, and the fact that everyone's basically got like four to six sideboard cards that are directly towards your deck. That, usually if one of them resolves, you lose the game because it's either a card like Boil, you lose all your lands, a card like Choke, you can't untap your lands, a card like Blood Moon, you can't cast your spells. Basically every deck is going to have a good plan for this deck, so if you don't have reps, I wouldn't necessarily play this deck, personally, although I do think it's the best deck. The deck that I'm going to be playing, whether fun, funnily enough, uh, a deck that has usually not shown up or done well recently in basically any events, is Burn. I thought to myself, I think Burn's pretty bad, but I've not been having basically any success with any deck. I'm just going to try Burn out because, you know, whatever. Like, we'll try it out. I'll play it in a prelim, you know. If it goes badly, it goes badly. And then I went 4-0 in that prelim. Won every round, pretty cleanly and safely. Where I was like, okay, I didn't play against any 4-color Omnath. Played against some weird decks like Jund, Red White Hammer, Black Red Midrange, Black Red Shadow. I was like, oh, some, these matchups seem good, but don't seem like that representative of the metagame. 
next time I play against uh, Uro Omnath, I get fairly lucky and beat that in another prelim. I play against Red Black Shadow, beat that. I play against Black Red Midrange, beat that. And I just happen to absolutely crush. I play against the Green White Heliod deck and Green White Titan, beat both of those somehow. And I went 4-0 in another prelim, so I'm like, okay, maybe this deck is real. Maybe there's some work to be done somewhere. I may be changing the sideboard up a bit, but I do feel pretty confident about this deck, surprisingly enough, and I am going to be playing it later in the Super PTQ today. Personally, I think if you're not playing 4-color on mass, you're probably a fish. But being the fish that I am, not being able to play it, I'm going to play Burn and try my best to beat on that decks, however futile it may be. But there are a bunch of other decks that are semi-playable. I have played a lot of the white-green Heliod deck, but a lot of people in the big events make you click through the combo, and that hurts my wrist, so I can't really do that all that much. There are other some combo decks like Oops All Spells and Belcher that I think are reasonable. Dredge could be fine. Lots of different decks that I think are reasonable in the format, but they're very clearly best decks like Four Color Euro. Now let's move on to Legacy. Now personally, I usually don't play that much Legacy, but when I do, and I do play the format... Actually, this is not my Team or Delver deck list. Where is it? Oh, I guess this is what we've got. <clears throat> usually I play Team or Delver. Um, this deck list is a little bit out of date with some of the sideboard cards and such, but I do like this. Actually, no, this is my deck list. Never mind. <laughs> but I think more of a change from Young Pyromancer to Hooting Mandrels is the way to go because of so many Rug Delver mirrors. But Rug Delver is basically the best deck along with Teamer Snow or four to five color Snow, I would say. Um, basically, pick one of those decks. Whichever one you're slightly more comfortable with, I think both of them are very, very good. I, I would personally say Rug Delver is a bit better, and what I'm more comfortable with, and I've done particularly well with it. I've top four a Legacy Showcase with it, I've top eight a Legacy Challenge with it. Whenever I play this deck, I basically just like crush the tournament that I play it in. Um, but I don't play the deck very much because a lot of the Legacy tournaments are early in the morning for me, and I always feel like I'm going to make mistakes if I play it early in the morning. I should probably just uh, shut up about that and just play the best deck knowing that I can just crush because it's the best deck and I have some amount of uh, reps with it. So personally, I'm going to be playing Rug Delver, and I think that's what you should be playing as well. Let's move on finally to Vintage. I don't quite have a Vintage deck that I'm that in love with. This is a Golos uh, combo deck where you play Leilana Void plus Humble Obedience along with Dark Depths plus <clears throat> Thespian Stage, and you have some Sphere effects and uh, general um, prison effects. Sure Resistance, Wasteland, Strip Mine, Thorn, Chalice of the Void, Lodestone Golem, Trinosphere, all these things. So I think this deck is like fine. It's done pretty reasonable well in the hands of someone named Slasher21. Um, they've top aided a showcase, they top aided a challenge. Been putting up some good results with it as well. I have done reasonably well when 18 and 6 in the Mana Traders event has had some success in the leagues as well. I've not really broken through with this deck in the challenges and such, but I do plan on doing some reasonable things with this. This is a deck I'm probably going to be playing. Misha's Workshop is fairly busted, and you get some card, and you get some quick combos that people don't necessarily have the answers to. There's loads of different decks you can play. I think Dredge is probably the best deck you get to play. Force of Vigor, Force of Will, Force of Negation, and you kind of just uh, get to play all these free spells along with Bizarre Baghdad and get to own your opponents. You can play decks like, um, uh, not Oops All Spells, sorry, uh, Dark Petition Storm, a deck that's done well and won a showcase event recently. You could play Underworld Breach combo, you could play Paradoxical Outcome. There's loads and loads and loads of different decks you can play in um, Vintage. There's basically three pillars, or I guess four pillars. Fair Blue, Combo Blue, Dredge, Workshop. And there's loads of different ways you can build in each of those variations. And basically, try to pick a pillar you want to play, and then look at the different variations you can build between them. With Fair Blue, you've got Just Guy and Bug. With Bizarre Baghdad, you've got uh, the Hollow Vine deck lists, or Dredge, with... Uh, combo Blue, you've got Underworld Breach, Paradoxical Outcome, Dark Petition Storm, you've got uh, Doomsday, along with some others. And with Workshop, you can go Combo, Control, or Aggro Route with Ravager Shops, Golo Shops, or uh, Combo Shops. And finally, let's move on to Popper. Tron, still clearly Tier 1. This deck list is probably a bit out to date, as I have not been playing Tron recently. But the deck that I personally play is a fun one because uh, I get to Dumpster Tron because I get to play eight main deck uh, Lando spells. And in the board I get a pile of Red Blasts and Ancient Grudges and stuff to attack them as well. This deck I don't think is the greatest, but I've had a lot of fun. I've got second, pl second place in a Popper Challenge along with a 5-2 and two, the two times that I've played it. And it seems pretty reasonable to me to play, although not the best. Well, 
Hope you guys liked the video, liked everything I had to say. Hopefully it gave you some insight in what to play this weekend and gave you some help. And if it did, make sure to give a like to the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitch and Twitter to see me play in these big events this weekend. And I'll see you guys uh, next week with another What Decks to Play. And maybe some things will change in some formats and we can shake some things up. See you guys then. Bye-bye.